So this is a very interesting video. You don't need to take my word for it. Just watch it till the very end. What I'm going to do is dissect a very detailed and a complicated prompt so that you can understand what prompting really means and how you can use AI and large language models more effectively. Hi, this is Akash Varma. Welcome to QuantLab. This video is going to be about building a prompt or rather using a prompt, whichever you want to uh, go. And the idea is to learn the process of prompting and why prompting is so important when you work with the likes of ChatGPT. So this video ka flow is very simple. Hai. I'm going to walk you through what I have built. And this is my own prompt which I use to kind of work through. And I've been refining this for a significantly large period of time. I've removed a certain elements which are very, very specific to me. But by far and large, this is 95% open code. Don't intend to hide anything. If you want to just copy this, please take it from the member community. Or you can learn through the video. I'm going to make this very detailed as well. So ignore the naming and all. The idea here is that prompts are the way that LLMs understand. So in this prompt, I am trying to create an ideal Python developer that can help you generate Python code. So this is not going to give you strategies, but it has the sections that quantitative trader or a Python developer should have and should generate in the code for a strategy to work. Basically capturing different sec sections. How does it look like? I will show that to you quickly. So when you go to chat GPT and give this, and I've just pasted the same thing in an open model, what it had done is it has given me a simple demo GPT moving average crossover strategy. I can go to a regular model as well, open a new chat and just give this as an input and it will still work. There's, there's, there's nothing to, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the parameters as well. Just wanted to show you how the output is going to look like. It's going to give a very comprehensive outline, etc, etc. And it's talking about, you know, how it's going to do things like, you know, give given the detailed requirement, etc, etc. So, so let's dive into what this is. So the idea behind is most people have certain indicators that they have built or some analysis that they have done and they want to convert it into a strategy. So this starts from that understanding. So at the very end, you have an option to paste your own indicator code. Now this can be converted into Pine script. This can be for Python. This is for Python. But at the very end, you have an option to replace it with your indicator code so that the system knows that this is what I am working with as an example. So this is bottoms up. So it starts from the bottom but it gives you output from the top and each section is optional. You can detail it, you can change it. I'll walk you through it. So the first is setting up the context. What are we trying to do? We're trying to convert an indicator to a strategy. So the, there's certain parameters that you're trying to make sure that the developer or the prompt here in this case knows. So you're telling it that convert the indicator kit so code suitable for backtesting and live trading compatibility with libraries, preserving time frame logics and all that and handling data gaps and then data handling to certain guidelines. You can change the libraries to your need. Also, here's an overall view of the persona, which is, you know, overall what your role is. You're a professional Python trader, blah, blah, blah. What is it going to do? It needs help in converting a trading indicator, etc. The second part is visual representation. All of these parts can be thought as optional or uh, you can extend it. As I said, I've removed things which are specific to me. So you can free, you're free to use it. So the second section talks about visual representation. In the code, it's important to get visualization. After a lot of generation of the code, people think, oh, it would have been nice to have a chart. It would have been nice to see the equity curve growing. It would have been nice to see how the you know crossovers are happening, whatever is that you're doing. So this makes sure that the developer knows that it has to do a visual representation. The third section is trading logic and position management. Basically saying what is the position strategy? How is risk management capturing? I have put very two simple points like implement the strategy to open long positions only. Do not include short positions. Include logic to exit positions and move to flat state based on a specified condition. Now the condition can be present in the indicator. Remember that we are working with the indicator code or you can supply it right here by editing this. You can have your own position strategy. You can have your own risk management strategy. Trade execution parameter. If you want to automate this completely, if you wanted to generate code that's also giving you automation, use this. 
you can have commission and slippages you can have you know slippages factors you can have whatever is the percentage that the broker is charging etc etc and there's different settings that you might want to work with let's say you have the indicator that operates in different time frames and in different time frames you want it to have a different sort of you know execution parameters which is very natural you can configure all of that here strategy configuration and user inputs you can have all the user inputs defined here. So what will happen is the generated code will actually, when you run that code, it will ask you back for these user inputs. Now these could be anything. These could be, you know, some sort of a threshold, some sort of numbers, some sort of date filters, some sort of, it could even be the ticker that you're trying to do. So it basically that. Some sort of strategy identification, which is nomenclature, metadata and versioning information. I'll, I'll show you why this is important because as you progress through doing a bunch of changes in it, it's important to keep track of the code that you have generated. Then comes performance matrices and benchmarking. And as you can see, I'm only till seventh. There's about 10 more to go. Performance matrices and benchmarking. How do you do back testing? What is the visualization looking like? What is the reporting looking like? All of that. Then comes certain areas which a trader like you, if you are a trader, might not think. So if you were a techie, you would not think of the previous things. You would not know of the previous things. But if you are a trader, the next set of things might not be more important to you. So you should focus on that. So code quality and best practices. I don't think people understand the importance of it. But when you operate in a high risk environment like trading and money, real money being involved, you want to make sure that the code is of good quality. Now, normally people assume that every code is good quality. Aisa nahi hota hai. Most of the code is actually bad quality and that can lead to significant speed issues in your code. So it will help you capture that. Capturing simple things like testing and validation. So unit test or validation scripts using of libraries like PyTest. Then further moving forward, library updates and all recommendation, making sure that all libraries are picked as a latest version. There's options to even pass those link of the libraries so that the code can scrape it. User customization options. I think some of this we have already talked about. You can also give library selection options and all that. And then there's some sort of a collaboration in future uh, development. Like for instance, if you want to do parameter optimization, there can be frameworks like Hyperopt and Optuna. You can have a feedback mechanism to refine the strategy. Let's say of all the code generated, you only want to update a certain piece of it. This will help you do that. Multi asset and portfolio strategy. This is kind of a little advanced where I wanted it to handle multiple asset or portfolio. Honestly, I have not used this in my own work, but I thought this would be a good section to have. Then comes mostly about data handling and pre-processing, which is very, very natural. How do you connect to different data sources? Where do you get the data? Is it Yahoo Finance? Is it Alpaca? Is it Dhan API? All of that. Sorry, I have a poor throat today. And then integration with trading platforms. How do you want the trade to happen? You can pass it to Zerodha, whatever, whatever fires your brokers. Some sort of ethical and compliance consideration, making sure that if some information needs to be passed, it is passed. Error handling and logging. Most people, uh, even good techies would not include it. Like if you have a code, this shouldn't give you error handling and logic scenarios. And then lastly, UI needs and education and support. All of this makes the prompt extremely huge and big. And now you'll see how it's looking like. So it, now I, I've already submitted it to chat GPT. This was the whole prompt. This is not going to give you anything. It's just making sure that the prompt you give to the system is very clear. So I can probably say, given the above prompt, give me a strategy which uses RSI and MACD. Simple. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to generate. So yeah, it's going to go through all of this series, like indicator to strategy, blah, blah, blah. It's going to generate the strategy. It'll, it'll go through every sequence that we discussed, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically what it's giving you is good developer that is working through certain set of parameters. Now I'll just stop this. It is not important as well to use all of them in one single prompt, depending on the kind of model you have chosen. Like I was using the most recent O1 strawberry model, which kind of thinks. So it's able to digest all of this, but smaller models might not be able to. But the best part about this prompt is these are all sections. So you can technically select few of them which are important to you and build on that. 
treat this prompt as some sort of a scaffolding, some sort of a architecture, some sort of a design on top of which you can keep enhancing your prompts. All right. So that's Akash. This was a video about prompting. And if you have liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you want more details, please, please put in the comments. If you want access to this, just take it from the member community. All right. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.